Good evening, YouTube. Yardism here. Just sitting out in my backyard tonight. It might get dark. If it does, just squint. kind of comes off the <clears throat> tail end of the video I did about 9-11 a couple of days ago. It's about thankfulness. I'm thankful for a lot of things in my life. A lot of people, friends, family. My station in life. I don't have a lot, but I've got enough. I'm content with what I've got. I'm thankful to have it. My health isn't the greatest, but I'm alive. God's given me another day. Hopefully he'll let me make it through this video. There's a lot of stuff I'm thankful for. One thing that I'm very passionate about and very thankful for is our veterans. I'll probably do some kind of video for Veterans Day. But I just couldn't wait. It's been on my mind the last day or so. I got seven members of my family older than me that were uh, our veterans. Two served prior to World War II, three served in World War II, and three served post-Korea, all in the Army. And I'm thankful for what they did. You know, my dad says he didn't do much <clears throat> but he served and that's a lot you can't belittle that fact I say people that received the Purple Heart or the Medal of Honor or cooks or supply clerks or somebody that went through training and then broke their hip and couldn't serve overseas or in active duty or anything like that they're no different to me. There, there are levels of, of um, service and levels of what they did and stuff like that, but it's the attitude and their reasons for serving and the part they played, big or small, it's no different to me. I'm thankful for that. After World War II, a lot of people came home and Damn near every one of them were considered heroes by the entire country. A lot of them, um, even people like Medal of Honor winners, like man, they're they're endless. But people that you know, somebody might know, like Audie Murphy, or. Um, you know, the unit that uh, Band of Brothers was fashioned after, or, um, you know, it, it's endless. There's hundreds of thousands of them. They don't consider themselves heroes. They consider the people that they left over there that died for them, that died for no good reason in some instances, and by that I'm not talking politics. They consider them the heroes. Almost without fail, just about any military person, any branch, past, present, people they consider heroes often will be medics and people like that, people that uh, run into the fight to save their fellow man. Most of those Medal of Honor winners did some things that the average human being could not fathom. 
They did things that the average service member, in a lot of cases, uh, probably could do and would do if put in that situation. But most of them were never put in that situation. But they don't have that point of reference. But uh, and almost every one of them, and I've I've listened to and read from hundreds easily almost to a man every one of them will say this medal of honor doesn't belong to me it belongs to those guys I served with it belongs to those other guys in the battle it belongs to the other guys on the chopper that didn't make it you know that that kind of stuff but uh, anyway after World War II a lot of people were considered heroes uh, after Korea a lot of people didn't even give it a second thought. They weren't treated poorly. Korea's called a forgotten war, and unfortunately I think that's true for a lot of people. It shouldn't be. Those guys went through hell. It was, uh, I mean, they were fighting in the dead of winter. A huge percentage of them came back lost their feet, their toes, frostbite. Just a, an incredibly tough situation to be in, in the midst of war. Much like the Battle of the Bulge, uh, during the Revolutionary War, uh, my mind just went blank. But, uh, there was a Valley Forge where they were in the dead of winter and they didn't have modern conveniences. They had wool coats and you know, socks tied around their feet. Just unbelievably brutal conditions to be facing when you're prepared for it. But when you're not prepared for it and you got a bunch of hostile people across the river shooting at you, it's even worse. Sorry if I start shivering, I'm a little bit chilly. <clears throat> Anyway, after Vietnam, during Vietnam, a lot of those guys were not considered not only heroes, they weren't considered human, they weren't considered worth the time of day for a lot of people. And, uh, that is a black mark in American history as far as human relations goes, if you ask me. They deserve every bit of the amount of respect that the people that served at Valley Forge and San Juan Hill and Verdun and Guadalcanal, Iwo Jima, Battle of the Bulge. It goes on and on. Chosin Reservoir, Dacto, the Adrang Valley. They deserve every bit of the amount of respect that everybody else got. It's different now. A lot of people are, have changed their attitudes since 9-11. Uh, you get a lot of people that uh, are very much, and don't get me wrong here, very much in that thank you for your service mode, which I'm, I'm happy about. I'm happy that the attitudes have changed. My only problem with that, and I don't really have a problem per se, I've heard from a lot of military folks that they have a problem with it because they don't feel it's backed up with anything. It's kind of shallow. You know, hey, there's a military guy, there's an army boy, or whatever. Thank you for your service. Feel good about myself and go on about my way. I think if you take the time to go up to somebody and say thank you you should know why in the first place that you're saying thank you why are you thankful for that guy what did he do that causes you to want to give thanks there must be something if there's not maybe you should think about it if there is, 
maybe you should include that caveat when you thank them. Hey, I see you sitting here with your hat on. And I just wanted to say thanks because I value my freedom, I treasure my freedom, and I know where it comes from. And you're a big part of that, whether you believe it or not. And I just wanted to say thank you. I don't know what you went through, necessarily. If you want to share that, I'd be glad to sit and listen. But from the bottom of my heart, thank you for putting on those boots and sacrificing a part of your life and for your family for sacrificing a part of their life and uh, you didn't have to do that but you chose to do it and I'm forever in your debt because it means the world to me that's a little bit different than kind of a lip service thank you and I understand not everybody has the right words at the right time. My wife, I kind of push her into saying thank you to people sometimes. I want her to understand. And she'll say, I, I don't know what to say. And I understand that. That makes sense to me. I didn't know what to say until I thought about it. But now, they probably get tired of seeing me coming because I don't know what not to say in a lot of cases. Anyway, if you see somebody that's a veteran and you know it, you can tell by their hats, their t-shirts, their tattoos, stickers on their trucks, um, they're talking to another veteran, whatever it may be. There's a lot of ways that you can figure it out. And you're thankful for them, let them know it. If you do it from your heart, they will appreciate it. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Um, not to get preachy or not to talk down upon anybody. I know a lot of people appreciate their service. I'm not saying you don't. I'm not saying if you say thanks for your service that you're a bad person. That's not what I mean by this at all. That's just how it hits me. Um, and I just wanted to share that. I will see you all later because I'm getting really dark. All right. Have a good night. Take care.